Every day she would get bullied. It's okay. Wait. <laughs> oh my god, you're so f***ed up. Twinkle little star. Hello everyone! Welcome back to my mother freaking channel. And my name is Stephanie and today we are back with another dude dude. Done. Mukbang. Alright. <laughs> Can you beat that? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. So today we are going to be feasting on I know it just looks like a fruit salad to you It just looks like the healthiest mukbang in the history of the world. Well, Stephanie Why aren't you stuffing your face with junk food? That's what we came to see Um, we are going to we're actually gonna cover this in hardened candy. It's called tanghulu Normally you would get the skewer and you would twirl it into the hardened candy all one by one Put it on a cookie sheet let it sit for 10 minutes and mm. then you start munching and crunching and an ASMR in. But I decided to be a lazy bitch today and we're just gonna pour it all over. I feel like that sounds Damn. a lot more pleasing. Mm -hmm. That sounds a lot more junkety foodity. And so that's what we're gonna do. But before we get started, I just wanna say today's video is sponsored by Unbound. Now, let me tell you a little bit about Unbound. Some of you guys might know it as Lumerit. That's how I fell in love with them. If you guys are sitting on your bed, your couch, your dining table, and you're probably thinking, listen, we're all probably self isolating, self quarantining, social distancing. Maybe you're sitting there thinking, wow, I've been just playing too much Animal Crossing. Wow, I've been watching too much TV. Mm. Well, here's the thing. You can actually be productive right now and get ahead of life right now, which I know might not sound the most pleasing, but trust me, at the end of the day, it is for you and you will be so glad you did this. Check the link in my description because Unbound is for someone who is about to go to college, thinking about going to college. Maybe they went to college and then stopped going for the past couple years, or maybe you guys are in college right now, had to go home and then realize that this is a lot of debt that I'm accruing. Let me just take a second to think about it. If you guys click the link in my description, Unbound will actually give you a free, kind of like a college journey roadmap on how much your degree is gonna cost, how long it's gonna take to get your degree, because it's better to make an informed decision. And they're also gonna tell you what classes not to take because they won't even count towards your degree and all of that. Now, once you get to that point where now you can make that informed decision, mm -hmm. you can think to yourself, wait a second, I really like Unbound and I like the idea of getting a degree without all of the debt. You can actually take accredited college courses through Unbound that you can later transfer to virtually any college of your choosing. So that means you're gonna save a lot of overhead costs on you know, dormitory fees, textbooks because they're included mm -hmm. or you know food going out these are all accredited college courses that you're taking online from the comfort of your own couch so trust me you're not going to be graduating from something called unbound university that sounds a little bit kinky you're actually transferring these credits to virtually any college of your choosing so mm -hmm. thank you unbound for sponsoring today's video here you go thank you sir wait you do it i'm so nervous i do it i'm so nervous I don't oh know what's going on. Right now, the sugar temperature is exactly 300, which is heart crack. Is it heart crack? Dang. I feel like I'm not saying this right. Whoa. Uh, whoa. That looks insane. So that's how you make it. So you just drizzle all over it. Wow. wow. Get one of the dry. Oh, kind of pretty. This rest of this mandarin. Wow. Is it all covered? Most of it? Yeah. Take your first bite, bits. Whatever you want, the world is your oyster. What the heck? He said what the heck. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Is that good or bad? Okay. Oh, try no. that. Is it sticky or is it hard? It's hard, right? Whoa. Is it sticky or is it hard? I need to try it. It's so good. It's like a shit. fruity candy. Oh, oh, you need to like break it. Because oh. they're all glued together now. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. Yes. Oh, my God. So you might have to break it with okay, your fork. Okay, let's try this one. Mmm. Wow. Wow. That's something else. Okay, Tang Hulu has this dangerous, dangerous way of if you do it too much, I believe, or too little, it, be, it sticks to your teeth like caramel mm -hmm. does. Mm -hmm. But we did it... I'm sorry. Okay, no, you haven't had strawberry Tang Hulu. It's all no, you. You have it. No, you have it. It's you you it. try it. You try it. You haven't had it. <laughs> oh, so you. good. I'll try the kiwi. Wow. Wow. Oh, shit. wow. What do you think? It literally tastes like candy. Mm. It's so good. Mm. That's so cool, isn't it? It just hardens like that. Wow. This is actually really good. 
This is my first time, and I'm like, I'm so amazed. You're amazed? <laughs> yeah. Bits. <laughs> Bits. It's kind of hard to get it, yeah. It's really hard. Okay, I'm gonna get a strawberry, get a piece of tongue hulu. Wow. And I'm gonna. Mm. 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 Wow. Mm. Wow. wow, so good. Wow, wow, wow. Well. Is it good or what? <laughs> Bro. Bro. What are you doing? We get it. You're the alpha. <laughs> Alright, the Alfredo. Yeah. Mm. Mm. It, I think it's so good with um, lemon. Lemon, because it's sour and sweet. Wow. Sweet sour. Sweet and sour pork. Okay, I need this blackberry. Please stop crushing on me. This is so cool. We are just gonna jump right into today's stories, which are about abandoned hospitals. I think the only thing scarier than going to a regular hospital where everything is in action, if you are scared of noodles, noodles, needles, needles, I meant needles. <laughs> you love noodles too much. <laughs> I meant needles. I meant needles. If you are scared of needles, which I am, if you are scared of needles, if you're scared of doctors giving you bad news, which I'm scared of, I don't know why I go in for an annual checkup and I'm expecting the doctor to come back with a list of diseases and issues that I've got going on. Mm -hmm. And so I hate those feelings. I hate the anxiety. I don't even like getting my blood pressure taken. I don't like when they say step on the scale and then they do the balancing thing and they keep doing it. And then you're just like, can you just, okay. You don't like people checking your weight. No, like I just wish it was the electronic one, but the, you have to like stand there and they like tilt it and then it like goes this way and then they move the thing and then it goes mm. this way and then they move it this way i don't think that has anything to do with like hospital oh it's just how they measure weight but like why can't they get an electric one i'm sure there's a reason like what if they can't afford one no i know they can those are so much more expensive. <laughs> i think those might be more accurate oh really uh, mm. is that why because that's how hmm. you're using physics to measure weight versus the other thing is you're using based tech you know <sighs> basing on technology you know, growing up in China, no. that's how they measure food. What? what? When you buy things by weight, that's how they do it. You put the... F you never seen a scale with the thingy? Okay, you guys really don't have any idea. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Right? Okay. So they put whatever vegetable on here and then they weigh it by that and then they tell you how much it is. I feel like you're getting scammed. I feel like you're getting scammed 100%. No? Mm -mm, I agree. No. Yeah, that seems scammy, bruh. Okay, and no. so I don't like that feeling. I also don't like the feeling where they tell me to get on the scale and I'm wearing heavy ass sneakers and I'm like, should I take off my sneakers? And they're like, no, it's fine. And I'm like, no, no I, I think, think I, I should. should. <laughs> but the only thing that I would hate more than going to a regular well-functioning hospital is going to one that's been abandoned for years and years and years. Why would you go there yeah, in the why? first place? Because people love exploring abandoned places. Mm. That's interesting. There's like a whole group of YouTubers. Like that's all they do. Explore abandoned places. Why is mm. that so hard to say? I want to say abandoned places. Sometimes they find haunting. Sometimes they don't. Mm -hmm. Creepy. So wow. we're talking about YouTubers? Mm -mm. We're wow. talking about abandoned hospitals. Would you ever go to an abandoned hospital? Heck no. Why? Why? Yeah. Because he's not? alpha. Because <laughs> um, I'm scared. What if the girl that you like wanted to go? Wanted to go? Yeah. Why would she want to go? Because she wants to be scared and then be like, Oh. Um, my head is all over here. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, how long do we go? Like she wants to spend the night in the abandoned hospital. Hell no. Mm -hmm. What about at night for an hour? What if she goes, Oh my gosh, Dan Dan, my dog is lost in this abandoned hospital. Will you come with me to go look for my dog? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I watched this movie though. You know? Once they yes. got in, they couldn't go. They couldn't escape. So mm -hmm. what they do? They're stuck. They just got stuck and they uh, happened to... <laughs> You know. Do it? Do what? They die. Oh, I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. <laughs> He's like, I'm like, do it? He's like, what? What would they, what do you? Do what? <laughs> the first abandoned hospital that we're talking about today is by far one of the most haunted hospitals, and it's because of suitcases. Allegedly, when you walk into this hospital, you can hear the thump, thump, thump of suitcases hitting the doors, hitting the halls. You can hear the of suitcases unlocking and slamming open. By itself? Mm. Mm -hmm. And there is this small little legend, I don't know if it's true, mm -hmm. that if you ever walk in there today to explore the place- Where is it? With a suitcase in New York, you'll never leave. So if I don't have a suitcase, I can't leave? We don't know yet. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think you should go find out. 
and come back and tell us, you know. And this is because, when the pointing is over, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is because of a very, very creepy backstory. Now, this is the story of a Willard Asylum in New York. Now, back in the day when Willard Asylum was first created, it was actually probably the best asylum you could go to. Other asylums, they were doing some whack. Okay, they were doing some mean stuff, which back in the day, like mental illness was known to be like a hee hee ha ha, let's torture these people type of thing. What? Yeah, back in the day, they used to have some really messed up laws. There is this one asylum, okay, getting backtracked, but there's this one asylum called Bedlam Asylum in London mm-hmm. in the, U- the UK. It was one of the worst notorious asylums back in the day to the point where they had such torturous treatments for the mentally ill. And like the mentally ill, it could just be like melancholy you're like sad and Mm. they'll like admit you Mm. and then they don't let you leave and they try to treat you with these weird treatments you're probably thinking oh they probably like stick you in a room and like ask you what you're grateful for you know Hmm. wow you want some dragon fruit yes please are you jealous nah are you you getting scared wow that's a big one is it good with dragon fruit or no (laughs) It's okay with dragon fruit. It's not my favorite combo. Dude, tangerine mm. is so good. Mm. Which one you think is your favorite? The think, strawberry. Really? Yeah. I think blackberry is the best. What? Yeah. Mm. You guys haven't had tangerine yet. It's so good. Mmm. Mmm. Okay, let me try this. Mmm. Isn't it good? Mm. Yeah. There's this one asylum in mm-hmm. London that used to be called the Bedlam Asylum. Mm-hmm. And like I said, they had some torturous practices. They had this one thing called rotating therapy. Take a gander. What do you think rotating therapy is about? Like, they put you on a chair and spin it. Oh my god, you're so f***ed up, yeah. Mm. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you should be so proud that you got it right. I mean, I just took it very literally and very stupidly. So they strap you onto a chair that's suspended. Bend it in the air, mm-hmm. and they turn the chair in the air about a hundred rotations a minute, and it's called oh. rotation therapy. Mm-hmm. And the reason they did it is even crazier because back in the day when Bedlam was running, there was a common belief that most mental illnesses mm-hmm. could be cured with vomiting. Mm. And so they do this to try to make you throw up. Lots of people hated Bedlam, okay? It was just known for being like very strange to the point where a lot of these people, after they went to Bedlam, they actually became very traumatized and started acting more of what you would imagine someone in a ward would act like. But prior to this coming in, they were good. That's Mm -hmm. the crazy thing. Sometimes you go to a bad facility, you come out worse than you were going in. Yeah. You know, sometimes you just need some love and patience. You go in and you get rotated on a chair. What the hell is that? That is cool and so a lot of these people they started developing lots of problems to the point where wealthy people in london decided wait a second this is kind of fun and so they would pay about a hundred dollars or so a hundred pounds at the time i think Mm -hmm. to go in not a hundred pounds at the time but like what would be equivalent today to like a hundred pounds they would go in and they would just roam the halls and lots of the times these wealthy people would even gather it around holidays so it's christmas you get your family together eat your christmas dinner and then you go visit Bedlam, and you walk through the halls and look at all of the people that are so crazy. Oh my god. And that became even bigger of a downfall for Bedlam because at one point they were being pretty much financially supported by these wealthy circus viewers is what like you would probably call them because they treated it like a circus so they would actually encourage patients to act crazier and if they didn't they would try to make them go crazy because that's how they were making their money at one point Hmm. that's so messed up yeah so back in the day wards were not nice okay and so Willard Asylum in New York right going back to Willard they thought Listen, this is insane. They were ahead of their time, but not like too ahead, but like ahead of their time, okay? They still did like electroshock therapy and mass groups and stuff, but they still decided, hey, out of all the asylums that we see today, we're gonna be the most progressive one and we're gonna treat these people, shocker, like people. And so obviously in New York, this became a very popular asylum because people would go, they even had a bowling alley where lots of patients could bowl together. They did lots of recreational activities because they felt like the whole purpose of Will 
colored was so that you could leave one day. Whereas mm -hmm. other asylums, they didn't really have that. They just felt like if you're ill, you're ill and you're going to be here for the rest of your life. And so at one point, they were they had like 5,000 patients. And then eventually there's a rumor that at one point at their max capacity, they had like 50,000 people there. Yeah, and this was back in the day. So back in the day, things like tuberculosis mm -hmm. runs rampant. Things like diseases run rampant, especially in close quarters. So lots and lots and lots of people passed away at Willard. And so when you visit Willard, you'll see lots of metal plaques with numbers on them. And those are actually graves, patients. Now you're thinking, why numbers? That seems weird, right? You don't really see a grave with numbers. Mm -hmm. And it's because back in the day, it is very shameful to have someone in your family that was at an asylum. And so you don't want your last name anywhere associated with it. And so these asylums would bury people and just put numbers. And so you see tons of numbers. Now they officially closed down in 1995, which really wasn't that long ago. Because I'm so young. That's the year I was born, obviously. <laughs> so like, so young, okay? And so it didn't close that long ago. Like yesterday, almost. <laughs> Like, really. He gagged a little in his mouth. I don't know what that means. In 1995, and a lot of people went, like, there was this one group of people. I believe they were, like, auditors or something for their work. They go and they take inventory of all the things that were there. They get rid of all the patient files or try to ship it to the, you know, remaining ancestors, et cetera, et cetera. And she was pretty much done with her work. She went and inventoried everything. She inventoried the morgue, all the supplies they had, patient files, took care of everything. Mm -hmm. And then she called her boss and said, hey, I'm done. Um, I think you and your other boss should come and do a quick little checkup. And so her boss comes and they check everything around. They check the morgue. Everything's good. They check, you know, the patient records. Everything's been inventoried well. They check downstairs. Mm -hmm. They check the first level. They check the second level. And they decide, okay, I guess it's finally time to close up. Mm -hmm. And during this time, they were using the stairs. Mm -hmm. But they decided, listen, we've been running around this morgue all day. Let's use the elevator. They had an elevator back then. Uh -oh. And so they get into the elevator. Mm -hmm. And that's when they realized, there's a level three. And they look at each other mm -hmm. and they go, what? They press the level, level three, the elevator takes them up, stops, and the door is open, and it's an attic. And they walk in, and they find an entire attic full of suitcases. 425 suitcases. Is this real? What the heck? Of people that died inside the asylum. And the workers didn't know what to do with their stuff. So they just kept putting them in the attic. One by one by one by one. So it's dead people's stuff. It's not dead people inside. No, it's the people's stuff. That's what stuff. I thought too. Yeah. Mm, okay. And they said immediately when you walked in, you could feel a different energy. And so they went and they realized, holy shit, there's 400 something suitcases. What the hell do we do? And they're still trying to track down if anyone's family is still alive, but it's really hard to tell. And so they're still trying to, you know, go through all of it. But they said it's just so creepy just so creepy because the average stay at this asylum was 30 years is that not average say? stay yeah hmm. 30 years damn there is this rumor that if you bring a suitcase into that asylum you never get to leave you move in for good hmm. i'm creeped out i don't like it i don't like stories like this you want to try it bring a suitcase into the asylum so the worker left uh safely yeah, mm. they all left, but everyone's like freaking creeped out. And then the way that the bags were packed, it didn't seem like these people thought they were coming here forever and that mm. they were going to die there. It looked like a vacation bag, like an overnight stay bag type of vibe. And then that happened. But just being honest, yeah. mm -hmm. this is so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> this is so sweet. I think yeah, this you is so bad for your teeth, though. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. It's like a little cave. Do you see that? That looks like cool. heels. It's like a little... Bro. So you were that kid at the beach. <laughs> if someone had a yeah, someone has a sand Dude, castle, I hate those. you come over and you just You give all your time, that one kid gotta That one kid gotta just freaking What are you guys talking about? You never been to a you never Okay. <laughs> <laughs> In honor of eating fruit tanghulu, fruit roll ups. What you know about them fruit roll ups? What you know about them fruit roll ups? And I promise that's the only roll ups we do in this house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, All right, Dan Dan, your turn. Right. All right. All right, Dan Dan. So we're gonna take turns doing okay. short, scary stories. Okay, yeah. But you're not doing it, right? I thought I just did mine. Right, right. For like 30 minutes, and y'all weren't scared, apparently. Right, this so is whatever. Very quick, okay? Okay. But it's pretty scary at the end. 
<laughs> okay. Uh-huh. Okay. Right. okay. There's one time a dad came from work, mm-hmm. checked the baby monitor because he has a baby, mm-hmm. very young baby. Damn it, let's Dan just Dan. say What, you know? Continue. All right, anyways, let's just say the baby is like six months old. And his wife was singing a song to the baby. Sing the song. Sing the song? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Like, but make it creepy. Go twinkle, twinkle, little star. Oh, keep going, keep going. <laughs> anyways, and then... That might be the scariest part of your yeah. story. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, I just lost. And then the door opened. What the heck, man? <laughs> what happened? What happened? The real wife comes into the front door with groceries. Mm. So that girl who's singing to the baby was someone else. <laughs> ah, <laughs> got it. Uh, 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 mm, yeah, yeah, I don't think <laughs> your scary storytelling skills. <laughs> I don't think it's for me. Alpha, unheard of. <laughs> unheard of. <laughs> it's not as easy as it looks, huh? The story starts with a girl named Ashley. Ashley. Ashley lives in the apartment by herself, all alone. She lives on level 14. And something strange, <laughs> I'm so sorry. something strange has been happening to her. I was gonna say, what? and the elevator broke. And scary story, that's the scary story. <laughs> I bet you've never heard of this one. Mm-hmm. Ben so, testing you. Mm-hmm. Something strange has been happening to her, right? She's been noticing that every morning when she get out the house and close the door, mm-hmm. she noticed there has been numbers written on the door. So it's on the top corner of the door, very small, four numbers. The first time he, she noticed it, it wrote 2301. Is there a dash, no dash, any spaces? No dash, just four numbers. Wait, that's so strange. Who wrote this here? What does it mean? She doesn't know, but it's so small, so she never pay attention to it. Next morning, she got out of the house. She looked up. Now there's A numbers. 2301-2235. Now there's A numbers. Mm-hmm. Someone wrote four more numbers on that door. Now she's getting confused. Is someone just writing four number every single day? Don't she tell doesn't know me, what's I going guess. on. And she went home. And this just continues to happen every single day. There's four number continuously going on her door every single day. Mm-hmm. The number gets longer and longer and longer. Okay, can I guess? Guess, yeah. It's how many breaths she took in her sleep last night. <laughs> no. Uh, hey, that's not bad though. That's not bad, that's yeah. Not bad. Now, finally, there's 56 numbers on the door. <gasps> Is it possible codes into her apartment that they're trying? They're trying codes to get into the house? Yeah. That's creepy, but no. Let me finish the story. Sorry. So one night she's like, this is so weird. I haven't noticed anything. All I see is this number. So she decided to stay up all night to see what happened. She just looked into the people uh-huh. and she's just staring at it all night, all night long, nothing. Nobody showed up, nothing happened. And finally she got tired and she went to bed at dawn. <gasps> Woke up in the morning, she got out, closed the door, four more numbers. Okay. It's the time she goes to sleep. Yes. Hey, that's a good. I'll see you. A little bit better than mine. <laughs> little bit, just a little bit. Because the last four number reads zero six oh five. I'm so dumb. If you didn't go on a twenty four hour scale, I would have gotten it. Twenty four hour scale? Yeah. You would have gotten it. Yeah. Sooner. Oh, because I re- if I yeah yeah if it's at like twelve uh. thirty or something. Mm. One two. Three. Was that good? Yeah, that was good. A per- little bit better. A little bit better than what? Mine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there's this one girl at a high school. Every day, every day she would get bullied. It's okay. Wait. <laughs> yes. One day, she, I guess she couldn't take it anymore. And so in a girl's bathroom, a teacher found a dead body, like her body, laying down with a full pool of like blood. And her wrist was cut, and there was a note saying, excuse my unnecessary mess, but I did not suicide because I was bullied. What was the answer? What, why? Because she got murdered. By who? The bully. Dang! <laughs> <laughs> but who wrote the note? The bully. The bully? Good job. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not gonna leave him hanging, but... I, I, it was supposed to be a riddle. <laughs> but you're just, your IQ. You're my IQ. And just like that, 
I love you guys. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Sorry, every time I do desserts, I feel like the video is super short just because I can't continue eating desserts for like an hour straight. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and make sure to check out Unbound linked in the description. And I'll see you bits away in tomorrow. Just like. Just like what? <laughs>